Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night, depending upon whatever time you happen to be watching my channel. Um, for those of you that are new, hi, welcome, super excited to see you. For those of you that are returning, welcome back, girl or guy, whichever one you may be. Uh, so today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I usually do unboxings on my channel, but today I'm actually going to do a car confession, I guess. Um, so really long story short, I'm just going to kind of sort of rant on my way into work in the morning. I think it would be pretty therapeutic for me. So we're going to try it out and see how it works out. So in light of recent events, you know, coronavirus and, you know, all the fun things that come with that, as well as, you know, the upcoming pending election and, you know, um, just, you know, really all the, the craziness and all the hecticness um, in the world. So I figured I'd take a couple minutes to actually just like kind of sort of rant or like put my ideas out there. So the very first thing is coronavirus. So coronavirus has been absolutely horrific. I don't know if anyone else has experienced it as bad as I have while living in Japan, but it is uh, pretty horrific. So um, about end of March when it like really started getting big. Um, so I was like traveling in January and February and in December when, you know, rumblings of it had started and it wasn't really too crazy or anything too hectic. It was just, you know, like, Hey, there's this new virus coming out of Wuhan, China. And, you know, um, of course, insert any number of jokes that you want to about, uh, it being the Kung flu, the Wuhan flu or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it just was like this really strange virus that was just spreading through, um, Asia. And, you know, it was, it was just, it was like, in, it was in its infancy. So not too many people actually knew about it. Not too many people were actually infected. Um, so I had actually flown from Japan back to the States and back from the States back to Japan in like a 96 hour period at the beginning of February, end of January. And I remember meeting up with my family and my brother, my brother telling me like, Hey, you guys have this thing going on. Um, hope you didn't bring it back, you know, jokingly, of course. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, it's probably just like the flu or whatever. So little did I know that that would be my last trip of 2020, which is also devastating because I had already planned on going to Cambodia. I had already planned to do a weekend trip in Korea. I had our, I had all these plans, y'all. Like, uh, anyways, so after, you know, that happened, so I start coming back and, you know, things are starting to get kind of, kind of crazy. Um, and like I like to say, kind of crazy. Things started getting kind of crazy. So it just started getting more and more, you know, Japan started getting its first few cases, its first few identified cases um, in Tokyo, and it was starting to blow up and spread all over the place. Well, I am stationed here, so my life kind of sort of didn't really change because we were still, sorry, I'm just trying to get the camera to lay just right. Um, so we were still going to work. We were still doing all the work things. We were still, you know... Um, coming in early, leaving super late and just like focused on getting my ship back in shape to go back out to sea. So we leave, we do, so like, as we start doing this, you know, towards the end of February, things started getting crazy. It started getting, um, started getting way more cases. We started getting cases, um, in the city that I live in. Um, we actually had got a case, um, in my work area and, so as you know, the normal Navy does, we did a knee jerk reaction and which was actually the smart thing to do in this instance. And they started locking down things. So like we started closing things on base. We started closing things um, in the vicinity of base. Like, so there's this drink in Japan called a Chuhai. And it is, I think I saw a video or a comment somewhere that said it's like, it's like the equivalent of four tequila shots in one can or in like one drink. And like this drink sneaks up on you because it tastes like, it tastes like slightly alcoholic Kool-Aid. And before you know it, you've had 10 million of them. Well, right outside of base, there's this huge area and it is essentially just riddled with what we call chew high stands. And they're very dependent upon, their economy is very dependent upon us going out there and spending money. Well, girl, they started closing down that. They started closing down any and everything it went from you can't go to, to Tokyo no more to you can't go to Yokohama to you can go home and you can come to work and that is it 
like it went from from 100 to zero like that it was it was like overnight I remember waking up and being like I can't go to Tokyo what the what, what? well hold on because I had just gone to Tokyo and I had just dropped off like almost 10 pieces to be repaired at Louis Vuitton and like I had more pieces that I needed to drop off to get repaired but I was waiting for a weekend and the weekend never came because before I could get the weekend coronavirus took it from me so then I was like okay it'll be fine I'll just have to find a new sales associate in like Yokohama like maybe I could try to meet my sales associate in Yokohama like kind of sort of the halfway point and figure that out and then before I know it I sneezed and I couldn't go to Yokohama and then I coughed and we couldn't go anywhere but home and work. And that was like work if you were essential personnel only. Like you had to be put on a list to be allowed to come into work. It got crazy. So then fast forward and you know, it's you know, it's, it's spreading all over the place and people are getting it and people's families are getting it and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And, you know, honestly, like, it put a stop to a lot of things. Like, life came to a halt. But the one good thing about it is I, I normally travel outside of Yokosuka to do my grocery shopping. There is a really nice um, natural, organic, you know, tree hugger, as my mom would call it. A nice little tree hugger grocery store in Yokohama that I go to. And that's where I usually get my groceries. And, of course, it takes me about, about 45 minutes to an hour to get there and about 45 minutes to an hour to get back. So... The one good thing about this that has happened is I have been forced to shop locally where I live. So I don't have a choice in where I want to go because I am restricted to a certain radius um, outside of my home and outside of my work. So I'm forced to go to all my grocery stores in or near my house, which is a good thing because I just discovered a grocery store the other day that I didn't know was down the street from my house. Uh, it sounds really weird, but it, like down the street, I'm thinking like it's like down a couple streets, down a hill, around a curve, up a street and over. But it's closer than a lot of other grocery stores that I have been going to. And it's actually honestly a lot cheaper. Um, so that was one good thing that came out of this is the ability for me to actually go um, and explore my local grocery stores and find things that I love in the local grocery stores. But it's also the bad thing because I found out that I am no longer going to be living in Japan. I'll be living in Italy sometime next year. So all these things that I love and all these things that I've gotten and all these things that I've found, yeah, I can't have them anymore because in less than 12 months, I leave. I am actually supposed to leave in 197 days. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, coronavirus. Oh my God. And it was like, it got even worse. Like in between February and where we are like right now, like I'm recording this in September 14th, right? So in between February and September 14th, like it has just gotten crazy. Like I would, I want to curse, but I'm not going to because I'm trying to keep it PG um, or trying to keep it G rated. So like even in Japan, it got crazy. Like there were rumors that the government refused to start testing people because they were afraid that more coronavirus cases would force them to not have the Olympics this year. And they were really holding on to the Olympics because they've dumped so much money into preparing for the Olympics. Um, and don't get me wrong. A lot of people that I work with chose to stay here like another year or two years for the opportunity to go to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of did it too because I was like, I will never probably ever get a chance to go to the Olympics ever again. So this would be a great little thing to knock off my bucket list. Well, eventually Japan didn't have a choice but to cancel the 2020 Olympics because everyone else decided that they were not participating. They didn't care how many cases were in Japan. They didn't care how many cases were not in Japan. They did not want to put their athletes at risk and their athletes I mean, honestly, we're sitting at home and quarantined and unless they're like, you know, raking in the dough and calling in a personal trainer, you know, it's, it's different going to a gym and training and having that high, um, athletic level than not doing that and just doing at home workouts. It's some of them have great gyms, but it's just, it hits different when you are not in your house. So um, yeah, unfortunately, Japan was forced to postpone the 2020 Olympics, and it wasn't because they chose to, it was because they were forced to, because no one was going to send their um, athletes here to do the Olympics because of fear of coronavirus. 
so after that, um, which does not help the, the Japanese government's case. So after that, you just saw the number of coronavirus cases just skyrocket. Like it went from like 10 to 300 overnight. And it just did not help the Japanese government's case when people were talking about that they were refusing to test people because they did not want to give up the 2020 Olympics. And then they said they did, that was not the case. And then overnight, after canceling the 2020 Olympics, or postponing it, I'm sorry, their cases just skyrocketed. Doesn't help your case, bro. So anyways, um, so that was like one huge thing. And then just the, the turmoil and like the underlying racism of the coronavirus like yes it did come from China but like some in some places and like some questionnaires it was like on there um like you know you, you get screened they ask you questions have you traveled outside the country in the last you know 12 week in the last you know 14 days have you felt have you not felt well have you just gotten back from an international flight like all these things right well on some of the questionnaires, it started saying things like, have you traveled to China in the last, like, three months? Okay, no. Have you had contacts with Chinese nationals in the last, you know, X amount of days or X amount of weeks, whatever they wanted to put on it? And this was, like, this was popping up everywhere. And I was just like, so... One, like, just because I traveled to China does not necessarily mean that I got the virus. It is a possibility, but it does not mean instantly that I got it. Two, just because I may or may not have had contact with a Chinese national does not mean that I got the virus. Like, not all Chinese nationals are walking out here spreading the virus. And then I think that they started realizing that a lot of their questions were um, not... I mean, I wouldn't say overtly racist. That's pretty racist. It's pretty racist. Like, their their questions were kind of racist. And so they finally realized that, like, oh, shit. You, no, pardon my language. Like, oh, shoot. Like, yeah, this is probably uh, not the way to ask it. So then they started asking, like, specific questions. Like, have you traveled to this certain specific province of China? Or have you had contact with anyone who has been there? Which is just kind of sort of the same way as saying, how do I have no brake lights? What? Um, so anyways, is like a way of saying, um, you know, like just the underlying racism of asking those certain questions, but now they, they've essentially cut out all that and just said, have you traveled internationally? Because as we can see, it's all over the place, right? Like you can get it from traveling to Italy, people in the States have it all over the place. Like you can clearly see that it's, it's in more than just one place it's not just coming from coronavirus it's not just coming from china um so yeah and just like so that's another thing that came out and then you know between the propaganda between the states and china they're trying to you know blame each other china is saying that they didn't make it um, you know the states did the states are saying they didn't make it china did and then, you know, I mean, it came from Wuhan. It came from the Wuhan province. So, like, it came from a lab in Wuhan that the Chinese government owned. So, like, it's not, like, it's not coming from there. Um, but, yeah. So, after that, you know, I mean, the Chinese government is kind of, you know, iffy about it because they don't really want people thinking that it is Chinese made instead of just taking responsibility and saying, oops, you know, something happened either at a wet market or at a genetic lab, you know, like, oops, our bad stuff happens. Um, now let's just try to fix it. Instead, they turned around to blaming the Africans that have migrated into um, China because there is a partnership between Chinese between the Chinese and between African nations and you know China dumps money into Africa Africa dumps some workers into China to help you know bond um, to help that bond and help that friendship so that kind of sort of went out the window when China started saying that the Africans have brought it over so after saying the Africans have brought it over um, you know the Chinese similar to how you know things were happening in the states with with you know Asian immigrants um, they kind of sort of went left and they went high left and like high left and high right. And they just started beating up Africans, uh, African immigrants in the streets. They started, um, they started, you know, telling them to go back to where they came from, which sounds very familiar to the States. 
and it was just it was it was just nasty all around like I, I remember telling my brother that I fell asleep in 2020 and I woke up in the 1960s or like the 1950s and it was very weird for me because I'm not used to seeing that like I'm used to reading about it and seeing it on books but I'm not used to seeing that so um that's kind of weird but yeah so after all of that it's still kind of weird like this is becoming our new norm where you know we're living in um sorry we're living in a time where face masks have become normal like the new norm is face masks the new norm is hand sanitizer the new norm is germophobic which is very interesting to me because oh because in Japan, before all of this, if you felt sick, you would wear a face mask, not for yourself, but to protect everyone else around you so that way you didn't spread whatever you had to them. So um, now it's just really weird that everyone is wearing a mask. Um, but the craziest part is in Japanese culture, they are all about, you know, the greater good, the greater person, you know, all that stuff. And they wear masks before wearing masks were mandatory and had no problems with it because they were like, oh, I don't feel well today. I'm just going to wear a mask so that way I don't get someone else sick. But instead of doing that, a lot of people are upset and they're angry. And, you know, I don't live in a dictatorship. I don't understand why I can't just walk around and not wear a mask, you know, all these things. And people are rioting over wearing masks. That doesn't even make sense to me. Like, you know, this is this is something that is transmitted from coughing or breathing or like par particulates of spit transmitting in the air and you are fighting wearing a mask. It is a piece of cloth. Why does that bother you? Why? Why does that bother you? That's the same thing as like me being upset that I joined the military and I'm upset because I can't dye my hair pink. right? Like, dead order and discipline is a thing. So like, like, just wear, wear a mask, people. Just wear your damn masks. This should not be that hard. This should not be that difficult. Just wear a damn mask. Um, and now I've ranted for 17 minutes. Uh, and this concludes my car confessions or my confessions in the car, whatever you want to call it, however you want to see it. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, if you like this, if you like the car confession rants, please let me know because then I will do more of them. If not, then I'll stop. Um, but as always, if you like the video, please smash the like button. If you'd like to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification so that way you can be notified anytime I post any new videos. Um, so thank you for joining me on my car confessions. I hope your coronavirus uh, experience gets way better than this garbage. Um, and be safe and stay healthy.